welcome in. It is Friday. Welcome to our Feel Good Friday show. I hope you are feeling good. And if you're not, I hope I can change that. That's what our Feel Good Friday show is all about. How are you guys doing out there? How has your week been? Has it been good? Mine's been rough. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. I'm a little under the weather, but I'm still here doing the thing because the bills have still got to get paid. And don't you hate that as a woman? Now, listen, we, we have very few men that are in our audience. So, guys, I don't mean to um, I don't mean to exclude you, but a lot of us here are mothers, grandmothers, you know, or even if you're not, it doesn't it doesn't even matter. I think it applies to all women in general. But like when you're sick. There's nobody to take care of you. Like you're still responsible for all of your things, right? You're still responsible for all your things. That's how I'm feeling today. I woke up and I was like, dang, I wish I could just stay in bed and rest and feel better. But I can't. I got to get up. I got things I got to do. I got to handle business. Got to stand on business. <laughs> Sick or not, we got to stand on business. So I'm standing on business today. I may not sound very good, but... um. But I'm doing all right, and I would, I would much rather spend my afternoon with you guys than spend my afternoon laying in bed feeling icky anyway. So you guys have given me a reason to get up and like, you know, put at least some of my clothes on. I do have on pajama pants. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> all right, so it is Feel Good Friday, guys, and before we get into that Feel Good Friday, we are going to run through all of the housekeeping. So. Let's get into that. I'm trying to like hold back a cough. I don't want to cough all over you. I don't want to share this with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> so Sandra, yes. Happy International Women's Day. So this is a great little segue into a uh, couple of things. So um, it is International Women's Day. And for those of you who are subscribed to the Art Beats website, you also know that it is International Women's Day and that that is coming across in the form of 20% off women's owned brands. That was hard to say <laughs> over on the Art Beats website, guys. And this is a perfect opportunity to use my um, affiliate link if you would like to. You don't have to, but you absolutely can. This week it is finally available. So if you would like to use my affiliate link, I do make a small commission off of any purchase that you make using that affiliate link to do your shopping over on the Art Beats website. Um, however, for me, it's more important other than, I mean, the small commission is great. It's not a lot, but the most important part for me is the tracking of the sales. That's why I encourage you to use it because I'm not so worried about the monetary aspect of it because Art Beats takes very good care of me otherwise. Um, it's just so that we can kind of track the sales so that I know that I'm driving people from my community over to the Art Beats website. And using that affiliate link is a great way to keep up with the traffic sources and where they're coming from. So uh, if you do choose to use that affiliate link, I appreciate you so, so much. That is linked in the description of this video in both Facebook and YouTube, as well as being dropped in the comments here from my team. So... That being said, don't forget to set your reminders for 4 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon for my Art Beats Live. I will be featuring one of those women's owned businesses in my design. We're putting together a St. Patrick's Day inspired design using some Gardan beads. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to kind of bolstering up um, support for women's owned businesses. So definitely want to set your reminders for that. Come hang out with us this afternoon over on the Art Beats website and take advantage of that 20 percent off. All right. So let's see. What else do I need to tell you guys? Oh, this week I also launched Patreon for my YouTube family and for my Facebook family as well. It was kind of geared towards uh, YouTube, but it is most definitely open to absolutely anyone. And as of today, let me pull it up on my phone here and I can tell you as of today, since I opened it on Tuesday, I have 52 total members so far and growing. That is what we are looking for, guys. We are looking for that. I want that community to grow just like it has grown here over on the Facebook side of things. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with my Patreon, that launched on Tuesday. Patreon is a group that is... It's it's hosted over in YouTube land for my YouTube family, but Facebook people can come over there too. Um, so basically, Patreon is a paid membership. It is $10 a month, which, guys, is like chump change 
when you break it down for what the what the projects are, right? So Patreon members get exclusive content, three at the minimum, read my lips, minimum, because I'm hoping for four, exclusive to Patreon only projects a month. So that means you're going to get not only the regular lives that I do here for free, but you're also going to get exclusive content. There's already a project that, that lives over on Patreon that was already uploaded. And members who subscribe to that $10 a month get access to those uh, projects, those exclusive content. Uh, those projects will never be released on YouTube. They'll never be released on released on Facebook. They live exclusively in the Patreon little world. Uh, and there, you also get access to my Discord server, which is the same as a Facebook group, but over on YouTube. So for those of you who do not do Facebook, but are missing the community aspect, of our Facebook groups, this is the answer to that. So um, if you would like to, I would absolutely love for you to join my Patreon. Like I said, it is exclusive content that is only for Patreon subscribers. And so far, we have a whopping 52 members and it's only been open for what, four days. So that is amazing. The um, the Discord server that has been hopping this morning, people are checking in with each other and saying, hey. Um, so I'm really hoping to grow that side of my community and I would love for you to come and be a part of it. Okay, so now we can get into the Feel Good Friday stuff, right? It is Feel Good Friday, which is my favorite day of the week. Feel Good Friday is all about fun. <laughs> Discord, a terrible name for a good product, says Wanda, I, right? <laughs> It really kind of is. <laughs> so, uh, like I was saying, Feel Good Friday is all about fun and easy instant gratification jewelry pieces that you can very easily create. And I make that super easy for you by putting everything that you see in the show today in kit form. And it is available for purchase over in my Etsy shop. My team is here in the comment section of both uh, YouTube and Facebook, dropping links directly to each one of the projects so that you can go over to my Etsy shop and add those to your cart. Now, that being said, when you add items to your cart, you want to be sure that you're closing that cart out at the end of the show, because if you wait too long, a lot of times things will sell out because all of my kits are in limited quantity. I'm just a one person army here. <laughs> so I am not able to make hundreds of kits, right? So however many kits there are that are in the shop, that's all there is. So you definitely want to be sure you're closing out your cart and not missing out on the opportunity to grab those items. Because a lot of times by Tuesday, the, the following Tuesday, a lot of those things are gone. Not everything, but a lot of things are gone. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so like I said, everything is available for purchase in my Etsy shop that you see in the show today. We focus on simple techniques on Fridays. We talk about simple stringing, simple wire wrapping, um, and simple knotting, things like that. We do not do hard techniques on Fridays because I want you to go into your weekend feeling uh, inspired and able to make some fun, beautiful pieces without using every technique you've ever learned while you're waiting on these kits to make it to your door. Okay. <sighs> That's a lot of talking for somebody who is <laughs> struggling for air here. Um, okay, so we always start out with a maker mix. Maker mixes are small batches of beady goodness, things I don't have enough of to make a full kit out of, but things that I still want to share with you. So we're going to start out with a maker mix, and then we're going to get right into the kits. I only have one true do-it-yourself kit today, and I'll show it to you, uh, and we'll talk about that when we get to it, but let's get turned around and get started. Let's do it. All right, so turning you around here for the back camera. <laughs> Wendy says, is that a new Q necklace? It is a new Q necklace. It absolutely is because my Q ring, I, I got mushed. <laughs> so I had to, I had to put something else on instead. All right. So this is our maker mix for the week. This one is also pink. I don't know if you remember what last week's maker mix was pink as well. <laughs> it, it was pink last week, um, but a little bit lighter pink. This one is called raspberry truffle and it is chock full of check glass goodness. There are check glass leaves, check glass hearts, check glass flowers. There are drucks in here, check glass um, rondelles, and of course, fire polish rounds, pinch beads and glass pearls in this kind of raspberry color I'm calling this one raspberry truffle so that's our maker mix for the week it's a beauty I'm gonna sit this to the side we're gonna get started right into the kits so the first kit of today guys this one is um 
what did I call this one? This one's Emerald Jade. And this is a true do-it-yourself. And I don't know if you're new, um, but the true do-it-yourself kits do not come with any findings. It's just the beads and whatever components there might be. So this one is loaded up. I was thinking of St. Patrick's Day with this one. This one is loaded up with some emerald dyed jade beads. There are three large ones, two smaller ones, and a ton of metal beads and bicones. So laying all this out here for you. There is also a nun design hook clasp. So I love these because you can use these as both charms or as an actual clasp. I'm using them as an actual clasp for this. So basically you just hook the hook through that side, right? So it's a really nice, nice, you guys know the quality of Nun Design. There's also a flower bead in here that you could use as a charm if you wanted to. Um, but I was kind of thinking bracelet with this one though. I do see now that as I'm kind of laying it out, you most definitely could make the front of a necklace. But you've got some beads here some metal beads. So you could do like the front of a necklace if you wanted to. You could do a bracelet out of it. You could do, use your clasp, use your big beads, use your smaller beads here and your little bicones and make some cluster earrings with your bicones, right? You could do little clusters. So you could actually get two pieces out of this one if you wanted to add all your metal beads in and use your little, so you could turn this one into the, uh, the beginnings of a necklace in the front. You could do a bracelet out of it. You could actually do a double strand, strand bracelet if you wanted to, or you could do like a bracelet and some earrings and add a little pop of metal to those if you wanted to. This is a really pretty one. So if you guys remember the true do-it-yourself kits, and there's only one in today's show, the true do-it-yourself kits do not have any findings. So there's no jump rings, no um, beading wire or chain or anything like that. You use the, the components, I'm sorry, the findings that you have in your own stash and come up with whatever you want to with what is included. So again, you've got five of these beautiful emerald dyed jade beads. You've got some beautiful green bicones and lots of metal and a nun design clasp. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. <laughs> I only wish that this was like the only live that I had today. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to try to nap between this one and the art beads one. So hopefully that'll help a little bit, but I'll make it. I'll make it. It'll be all right. I don't sound too good. I think that's probably the worst part. So I apologize for sounding like I have gravel in my throat. It kind of feels like I do not going to lie. <laughs> all right. So now the rest of the kits today, guys, are brought to you by our wonderful friends at Art Beads. And so because of that, you're going to see a lot of beautiful Art Bead things in our projects today. So I want to start out with my favorite, which is hard to pick because I love everything in today's show. Even though I don't feel good, I feel like I did a really good job on kits this week. And I don't say that very often. <laughs> uh, but I think a lot of it has to do with the, the beautiful beads and the components that I got from Art Beads to create these for you guys. So I want to show you our necklace, one of our necklace designs for today. And I want to show you these absolutely beautiful antique silver components that we're using in our necklace. So these beautiful components I got over from Art Beads. And they're marked on the back as JBB, which is a findings company, not to be confused with J, JJB, <laughs> which is Jesse James Beads. These are not. This is JBB, which is a findings company, and they have absolutely beautiful things. So I got these components to put together a really pretty necklace for you guys in kit form. So this is going to be the middle. We're going to, we're going to flank that with these two. And then as far as our beads are concerned, I have some beautiful check glass. I've got check glass drucks, check glass fire polish, and this like really yummy kind of purpley grape bronze, and then some gorgeous preciosa bicones. Okay. So let's put this together. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to lay this out. So I'm thinking 
and honestly, it doesn't really matter as far as the direction of these is concerned, the two on the edges, but this one's going to be our center point. I can just scoot you over just a little bit. All right. So in between these, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. In between these, we're going to put our beads onto eye pins. And <clears throat> a lot of these are already done for us. We'll do some of them together and then we're going to connect them. So you're going to do four of these, an eye pin, <clears throat> and we're going to do fire polish rounds. So we're going to do one of those fire polish. We're going to do a check glass druck. We're going to do a preciosa bicone another druck and one of our fire polish rounds okay so you're going to make four of these and you're just going to do simple loops on the ends you're going to grab the wire right where it is exiting the bead you're going to give that a bend you're going to come in with your cutter tool you're going to trim off leaving yourself about a fourth of an inch of wire and then you're going to use your round nose pliers to grab that wire you're going to roll back to create your simple loop, okay? So again, one, two, three, four of those. Those are gonna go in between each one of these. Then you know I have to do dangles. So I made these little dangles using two jump rings and two of the fire polish. And they make these cute little dangles here. And I'm gonna hang those from <coughs> our little components here. So looking at my picture, I actually put this one, I think I had this one over here. Again, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but you're going to hang your little dangles from the little filigree parts of your necklace. And you're going to make three of these. So there's one for each one of our components, our metal components. So one of these is already done. We're going to create one together and then we're going to put all of this together. So each one of your little fire polish beads are going to go onto a head pin and you're going to do a wrapped loop. So I'm going to thread that in or thread that on rather. I'm going to grab the wire right where it is exiting. I'm going to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. That's doing the measuring for me. So now I have room for my wire wraps. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. <clears throat> All right, I'm going up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side, and then I'm gonna wire wrap in that space in between. Okay. Colleen Saunders just got back from a snowmobile, snowmobile ride. Listen, I'm, I am <laughs> I'm so jealous right now. <laughs> I wanna come ride a snowmobile with you. When I get well, can I come ride too? <laughs> I don't want to share my ick with you right now, but <laughs> all right. So each one of your little dangles is going to have two of those. And <clears throat> then you are going to link together your little jump rings. Let's go ahead and do that and attach these to our components. And then we'll put all of this together. So we're going to take a jump ring between two pairs of pliers. Okay. And... We're going to thread on a jump ring and then our two dangles. And we're going to close that back. Now the jump ring that we thread on, we're actually going to open it. Okay. All right. And then you're going to attach that to... A little filigree opening right in the front of this component so that's gonna hang just like gosh that's so pretty <laughs> if this necklace doesn't sell out I'm gonna be surprised because this is so beautiful it really really is all right and then we're going to do the same thing to the ones on the edges Right, so I'm going to hook that in. So there's a little dangle there. And then same thing with this one. All 
All right, so we've attached our dangles to our little antique silver components. Okay, so now the rest of this is really, really easy. So you're gonna take each one of your little beaded sections and you're gonna open up one of the wrapped or the simple loops. So twist to open, attach to your component, twist. We're gonna pick up the next one, twist to open. Holly, we're sending you lots of love, friend. Lots and lots and lots of love. Okay, then I'm gonna move on to the next so you can see. I'm just opening and closing the loops on our components here. That's all. Okay. And then I'm going to move on to the next. Okay, I'm going to open this one. Now, the only thing about this is that as you go, you want to just be sure that everything's going on in the correct direction, right? So that everything... everything is going to face the right way, right? Is that not beautiful? So pretty. And I love the color combination here because this color palette is very subdued. And that's going to make it really easy for you to wear this all year. You can wear this in the spring because it has these soft, soft pastels, but then you can also get away with wearing this in the fall and the winter, particularly beautiful in the fall because of the purple and the soft kind of brown. It's like a brown sugary color. All right, so there is the front of our gorgeous necklace and we are going to just finish this off with chain. So you've got a piece of chain in your, <clears throat> excuse me, in your kit. You're gonna cut that in two, measure it up to whatever size you want and then you're just gonna use some jump rings to attach it. And then of course you're gonna put your jump rings in your clasp in the back. But yeah, this is, this is such a pretty necklace. It really is just, a really beautiful piece. And of course, as always, I will show you this on the bust at the end, but just so you can see right now, look how pretty, All right? This would make a really nice Mother's Day gift. Now I know we've got a ways until May, but there's nothing wrong with getting a jump start on things, you know? This is this is absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of in love. <laughs> All right. I'm going to set this to the side and we are going to move on. I've got another necklace for you guys. Now this is a necklace we've actually done before. Uh, we've done this one several times. We, uh, we do this one in different beads every single time and it always looks amazing. So this is our Lotus coin necklace. And for the most part, this is simple stringing. We are going to create three dangle elements here with some of these beautiful check glass lotus coins. They are that frosty purple on one side and that beautiful AB finish on the other side. There are Preciosa bicones, check glass rounds, and you can see the check glass rounds uh, are those awesome metallics, but in like deep, deep peacock colors. So purples, navies, teals, greens, there are also some tanzanite colored Preciosa bicones, which are kind of my favorite of the moment. This beautiful tanzanite purple color. All right, so we're going to create our three dangles first, and then we're just going to string up our necklace. So we're going to take a head pin. We're going to thread on one of our coin beads. We're going to thread on one of our clear AB bicones, and then a fire polish round and we're going to do a wrapped loop and we're going to add a <clears throat> jump ring to the top of this okay all right so coming in bend the wire coming in with my round nose pliers so i'm going up and over rotate take the wire over to the other side and then we are going to wire wrap in that space OK, 
Okay, and then tidy that up just a bit. We're gonna come in with our cutter tool and trim off. All right, and then we're gonna add a jump ring to this. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. I do not like coughing on lives at all. But sometimes you just can't help it. All right, so I'm gonna take a jump ring between two pairs of pliers, twist to open. I'm gonna attach that to the loop we just created and then I'm gonna to twist to close that back. Okay, and now I'm going to start my stringing. All right, so everybody's kit includes a 49 strand piece of bright bead stringing wire from Beadalon. And we are going to thread on our crimp. We're gonna thread on our wire guardian. We're gonna take that wire back down through the wire guardian. and then back down through our crimp. Okay, now before you crimp, make sure that those wires are not crisscrossing inside there, that they are running parallel inside your crimp. You're gonna come in with your crimper tool. You're gonna place that into the back notch. You're gonna give that a squeeze, give it the tug test. You're gonna turn it sideways, put it into the front notch and give that a squeeze that's gonna tidy that up. All right, and then you're gonna come in with your cutter and you're gonna trim off because you do not need any of that leftover wire. All right, and now we are ready to string this up. So we are going to start with one of our small metal beads. You've only got two small metal beads. The rest of them are a little bit larger. Save those for the middle of your necklace, okay? So we're gonna thread that on and we are going to thread on one of our Preciosa bicones. We're going to thread on <clears throat> a check fire polish, one of the small ones, and then we're going to do two of the large fire polish. Okay, then another small fire polish and a Preciosa. So this is going to be kind of the little, the little sections. Okay. Gosh, that's so pretty. All right, now we're gonna thread on a metal bead. This is one of the larger ones, okay? And then you're gonna thread on your, your little dangle and another metal bead. Now the goal here is that once you get this together, that those two metal beads are gonna kiss each other and that jump ring is not going to touch your bead stringing wire. Now, as you're stringing, obviously it's loose and you know, so that's gonna happen as you're putting this together. But at the end, when you go to crimp, you wanna be sure that those beads are kissing each other and that your jump ring is not sitting between there. Cause you don't want that abrasion between the jump ring and the beading wire. Okay, so those two metal beads are gonna act as a barrier there. All right, <clears throat> now we're gonna do our pattern again. So we're doing a Preciosa, a fire polish, the small, two of the large fire polish, small fire polish, <clears throat> a Preciosa. Drop those down. And we're gonna do the two metal again. So one metal, our dangle, another metal, okay, and then our pattern again, which is <clears throat> our bicone, our small fire polish, our two large fire polish. the small <clears throat> and the bicone. So you can see where this is going. How pretty is that? If you love peacock colors, this is most definitely a good necklace for you, for sure. All right, so now we're gonna do the metal
our dangle, the metal, okay, and then our little pattern again. So bicone, fire polish, the two larger fire polish. Oh, Ruth, she's going to be so happy. And thank you for making your purchase. Ruth on YouTube says she just ordered the flowers and chain necklace kit for her friend's birthday in April. She's going to love it. She really is going to love it. All right, we're finishing that off. And then we're going to finish this with our small metal. So remember, we had two small metal beads, one on either end. All right, so now laying all of that out, look how pretty, and we are ready to crimp. And of course we wanna take uh, into consideration that we are strung tight enough, not so tight that it, it doesn't have nice drape, but that those, those jump rings of course are not touching each other. I don't know what has happened to my wire guardian. I'm telling you, lately I've been losing everything in these, <laughs> during these shows. Let me grab another wire guardian from somewhere else. I don't know what happened to the one that I had. <clears throat> I always blame it on the cats, but honestly, I think it's just my, my workspace just gets messy, you know, and then I lose things in the mess and I will totally find it by the end of the show. All right. Whoops. Our crimp. We got to thread our crimp on. <clears throat> Right, we're going up the wire guardian. We're coming down the wire guardian. Oops. We're going down through our crimp. And if you want to go down a bead or two, you can, right? But we're going to pull, making sure that our wires are not crisscrossing inside there. And we're going to bring in our crimper tool, place that into the back notch, give that a squeeze. And then we're going to turn that sideways, put that into the front notch, and give it a squeeze. And then you just want to come in with your cutter tool and trim off the remaining beading wire. And just like with our previous necklace, we're going to use chain for this. Now listen, I use a lot of chain in our kits um, just because it would cost an absolute fortune for me to do an entire beaded necklace and make it in kit form. I like to keep to a certain price point. So that's why I do a lot of bead the front and then chain the back. Uh, if once you get these kits home, it is totally up to you as to what you want to do with them. So if you wanted to change out the chain for a beautiful piece of leather, or you wanted to change it out for more beads or a beautiful piece of ribbon, please feel free to, personalize these kits once you get them home um, it's it becomes yours once you pay for it and it arrives at your doorstep and you can do whatever you want to with it you can totally deconstruct it and turn it into something completely different if you want to up to you but there is our beautiful lotus coin necklace so pretty it's so good <laughs> All right, moving on to the next, moving on to the next. All right, I've got two bracelets for you guys, and <clears throat> they're both very, very different. We're going to start out with one that's got a beautiful lampwork bead in it. Now, we've done lampwork bead. We've used these lampwork beads in uh, bracelets before. We've used them in a silver-toned bracelet. This time, we're doing an antique brass-toned bracelet with them, and... <clears throat> kind of mixing it up a little bit. We've got some check glass bell flowers, which are kind of my favorite bead at the moment. We also have some really beautiful frosted melons in this like really pretty blue green. And we have some Preciosa bicones. Now the lampwork bead is a grace lampwork bead with a beautiful peacock feather on it. Okay, so this is our color palette. We're gonna get all of this together. So first things first, We've got a section that is a beaded chain with our beautiful frosted melons. So we are going to add our last melon to our chain here by using an eye pin. So all of your melons are going to go onto eye pins. <clears throat> Twist to open. Thread that on. Twist to close. Thread on your melon. And then you're going to do a simple loop. So you're going to do that with all of these. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total of the melons. There are not jump rings in between them. They are linked together, straight to each other, okay? 
All right. <clears throat> Coming in with our cutter, we're going to trim off, leaving ourselves about a fourth of an inch of wire. Okay. All right. So there are, <coughs> excuse me, there are all of the beads in our little beaded chain here. Okay, so we got that together. We're also going to put this guy onto an eye pin, but we're going to put our little check, I'm sorry, not check, our Preciosa bicones on either side of this because he does have an, a large hole. So I'm going to take an eye pin. I'm going to thread on a bicone. I'm going to thread on our lamp work bead. And you can see that bicone is going to sit right into the opening of that large hole to help stabilize this bead on the wire. Right, and there is our other. All right, so now I'm gonna do another simple loop here. Bending the wire where it exits the bead, coming in with my cutter, gonna trim, using my round nose pliers. Grab that wire and roll back. Okay, so we've got loops on either end of those. All right, then I've got one of these left, one of these little Preciosas. Uh, actually, there's two. Both of those are going to go on to head pins. So one of them's already ready. We're going to do one together. And then I'm going to show you how to put all of this together. We're just getting all of the main parts ready. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to come in. We're going to do a wrap loop on this guy. Just be careful. All right, so bending the wire, coming in with our round nose pliers. You know these are going to be dangled somewhere. <laughs> Regina says these colors scream spring. I agree. I agree. All right. And then we're going to wire wrap in that space. We're going to come in with our cutter tool and trim off the excess. And then I need to tidy this one up a little bit. It was a little, it was a little crooked. It's a little lopsided there. All right. So there. So you're going to do two of those. All right, then the fun part, this is why I'm obsessed with these beads right now. So you've got all of these Czech bell flowers. You've got a total of, of six of these, four of them I've already wire wrapped, two of them we're gonna wrap together. And <clears throat> I like to wire wrap them so that it looks like they have a little bead cap on the top of them. So you can do them this way, you don't have to, you can wire wrap them with regular wire wraps, it's totally up to you. But I'm going to, Sandra, me too. Q always makes hot toddies for me uh, when I'm not feeling well. So he doesn't always put whiskey in them. Sometimes he puts moonshine in them. It just kind of depends on what we have. <laughs> right now it's moonshine. Uh, have not had any of that right now, by the way. I only take those before bed. <laughs> so moonshine knocks me out. Okay, so we're going to bend this wire right where it exits the bead. Like we're going to do a simple loop, but we're not. We're actually going to do a wrapped loop. Some of you have seen me do this before. Um, I've had a lot of bellflowers in our kits lately. All right, so I'm bringing in my round nose pliers. They're sitting off to the side just a little, right? I'm going to go up and over. And then I'm going to rotate the pliers. And then I'm going to kind of twist to roll that loop down to the top of the bead. All right? just like that. And then I'm going to wire wrap, but as I wire wrap, it's actually going to wire wrap over the top of that bead to give it that little bead cap look. So as I wrap, I'm wrapping down and around the top of that bead. So it looks like a little bead cap, right? And then I'm going to come in with my cutter and trim off. And then use your pliers to kind of tuck in your end so it doesn't get hung on anything. But I think that's super cute. Now, you can do a regular wire wrap here if you want to. Absolutely. I'll raise you up just a little bit. Um, but I do love the look of that. So let's do one more together. And then we're going to put all of this together. All right. So just bending the wire over the top of the bead. Then coming in with the, yes, I'm sorry, I didn't mean for them to be out of the frame. So I'm coming in with my round nose pliers, that's why I did too, because you never know what happens. I get in the zone and then I don't realize that I'm not, I'm not in the shot. So I apologize. All right, so up and over. And then you're gonna rotate the pliers 
And you can actually do your rolling as you rotate the pliers. So I like to rotate the pliers first, and then I just kind of roll. I'm just rolling the, the pliers in my hand, and it's rolling that loop down to the top surface of that bead, right? And then I switch hands, and I use my pliers... Gail says moonshine. Yeah, that's actually the way. So that's the way that Q's mom used to make the when you're sick hot toddies. She would put moonshine in them. So and honestly, I think that it works just as well as the whiskey does. Now, my loop is kind of off center here and I can straighten it up here in just a second. But I'm going to go ahead and come in with my cutter and trim off the excess first. Of course, my pleasure. Sometimes I don't realize that I'm out of the shot. So you got to tell me because I don't use the the camera. I'm actually looking underneath the iPad as I'm working. So it, sometimes it's I don't realize where I'm at. I try to stay in frame, but it doesn't always work out. And then you can straighten your loop up with your pliers. Oh, I messed this one all up by mushing on it too much. <laughs> but. You've got your little loop with your bead cap on it. All right. So now we are ready to actually put this together. And <clears throat> there are um, a lot of jump rings involved here. Because <laughs> okay? you guys know I'm kind of obsessed lately with jump ring chains. Can't help myself. I just kind of am. It's just a nice way because it saves money on chain is to make them yourself with jump rings. All right. So we're going to take two of our larger jump rings because you've got two sizes of jump rings here. You've got um, these like five millimeter and your seven millimeter. So we're going to open up a seven millimeter. We're going to hook on another seven millimeter and then we are going to hook on our lamp work bead. All right. We're going to twist to close and we can go ahead and I'm going to attach just to let me know. I'm going to go ahead and hook my clasp to that. So I know that this is the end of the bracelet. Okay. So we're working from the clasp all the way around. All right. Next up, I'm going to take another one of the larger jump rings here, twist to open. And I'm going to thread on two of the bell flowers. And then I'm going to attach that to my lamp work bead. Before I close this, I'm going to thread on two of the smaller jump rings. And I'm going to close this back. Okay. So I've got two small jump rings right there. All right. Next up, I'm going to open up another large jump ring. I'm going to hook it through those two small jump rings, just like so. Need to work on the closures on all those jump rings. That's why I've opened and closed them a couple of times now, which I don't like to do, but all right. And then I'm going to thread on <clears throat> two more bell flowers. Okay. And then I'm going to thread on two more small jump rings. And I'm going to close that back. I'm going to open another of the large jump rings. I'm going to thread that through the two small ones and then two more of our bell flowers these are the last of the bell flowers and then before i close that i'm going to thread on the end of my melon chain and i'm going to close that back all right so you can see this is what we have so far okay really pretty all right, now we are just going to finish this off with a little bit more chain made out of jump rings and a couple of dangles here. So down here on the opposite end of our melon, we're going to take a large jump ring. And we're pretty much doing the same thing. Before I close this large jump ring, I'm going to thread on two small jump rings. Close that back. Take another larger jump ring, go through those two, and this time I'm going to thread on my two bicone dangles, and then two more jump rings, the small ones. And I'm going to close that back. And now I have one jump ring left 
this jump ring is going to go through those two and then on the ring part of our clasp. <clears throat> all right, so when you lay all of this out, that is your bracelet. Look how pretty! Uh, I love this color combination. So, so pretty. Just a really, really nice bracelet, right? Really pretty. I definitely need to work on the closures of those jump rings just to make sure that nothing accidentally opens and slips out. But otherwise, this is such a pretty little bracelet. It's got a lot going on. Um, but I think overall, just a really, really pretty one. All right, setting this to the side. We've got one more bracelet and two pairs of earrings. And then we will be done for the day. Now, this next bracelet has some really special components in it. This one is in this really soft baby, baby blue. There are some seed beads involved here. There are Preciosa bicones. There are Czech glass fire polish. And we have some beautiful, these are sterling silver, guys. These little sterling silver connectors with the little hearts on them. Do you see there's a heart there and a heart there? I, I love these. They're so, so pretty. They are definitely sterling silver. Um, and they are marked 925 on the back. So you know that they are 100% sterling silver. This is going to be part of the focal. So let's go ahead and do our focal first. The focal is going to be these two connectors with these beautiful seed beads in between them. So this is just a really kind of soft. This is a, a more understated bracelet than the previous ones for sure, or the previous one. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I've already got one of these ready. I'm going to go ahead and attach it and then we'll do the other one together. So it is just an eye pin with some beautiful seed beads on it. So I'm going to twist to open. I'm going to attach that to one of the little loops on my connector, close that back, to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to twist to open and thread on my connector, twist to close. All right. And then we're going to do another one of those. So I'm going to take my eye pin and I'm going to thread on 11 seed beads. So each one gets 11 seed beads. And then just a simple loop. So bending the wire where it exits, coming in with my cutter trim. Surround those pliers, <coughs> excuse me, and roll back to create your loop. Just be careful that your seed bead doesn't sneak into your loop. Okay, then you're going to open that loop, attach it. To your connector, close that back, do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to open up our simple loop and then attach it to the connector. Oops, I need to come from this direction. Just don't accidentally get your seed be caught as you are going to close your loop. All right. I kind of bent mine out of shape a little bit to, <laughs> to bend those back to that pretty, look how pretty that is. It's just soft and lovely. It's, you know, there's, there's nothing crazy going on here. All right. Then on either side, is a beaded chain. It's got two beautiful light sapphire uh, preciosa on the ends and in the middle is more of that blue light sapphire color check glass fire polish. So you're just going to make a chain on either side. This one I've already started. Okay so there's the preciosa. There's three of the fire polish and we're going to connect two more beads to this and then we're going to put all of this together. So um, the beads are connected directly to each other with the loops of your eye pin. So there's no jump rings in between here. So we're just going to go ahead and attach that one directly to it. Twist to close. We're going to thread on our check fire polish. Bend. 
then with our cutter tool to trim and then using our round nose pliers okay and then that loop I just created I'm going to twist to open it I'm going to thread on another eye pin and twist to close and then for the end is one of those beautiful preciosa icons and again just a simple loop on the end and with your cutter thank you alma i i should be today so this is day number three of feeling not good <laughs> um and they usually say that colds day number three is usually the worst you know and then you're kind of on an upswing and i'm hoping that's true i'm hoping that tomorrow i'll start to i'll start to gradually begin to feel better and that by the beginning of next week i should be i should be pretty good i know the cough is going to hang around for a while just because I'm really susceptible to bronchitis. And once it gets into my chest, which it is today, um, it usually takes me a while to shake the cough. But hopefully the congestion will be a thing of the past, right? <laughs> At least we hope. All right. And then I'm just threading on my chains on either side. And I'm not using a jump ring here. I am just using this, the loops that are already on the beads to open and close. And then for the clasp, it's just a couple of jump rings and my lobster clasp, and that's it. This is such a sweet, pretty little bracelet. And then I've got two quick pairs of earrings for you guys, and then that will be it for our show today. But don't forget two such reminders for 4 p.m. Eastern for my Art Beads show over on the Art Beads website. I definitely want you to come and hang out over there. I did notice that I gained a couple new Patreon members during the show today. So thank you so much for all of my Patreons and their support. This is such a pretty bracelet. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, I do ask that if you are a new Patreon member um, and you have signed up for the Discord, which I hope that all of you do, um, that while you are over on Discord, if you are using a screen name that is that we don't that doesn't isn't your real name that you please let everybody know on discord what your actual name is um so that we all know who each other is i don't want any lurkers over there hiding out um so <laughs> you know if you're using a screen name that's like i like to bead or um you know something other than what your name is please let everybody in the discord know who you are so that we don't have any strangers among us please and thank you all right, so <clears throat> I've got two pairs of earrings, quick and easy. First one we're going to do is these pretty rose gold or copper, depending on, you know, what you, this is like a, a bright copper, rose gold. These cutie patootie little earrings with these little connectors, some melon drops, and some check fire polish. Super easy, just really, really cute. I love these. Love, love, love these. All right, so we are going to start out with our melon, and we are going to wire wrap our melon directly to our um, our connector here. So I'm going to take my head pin thread on, and then we're going to do a wrapped loop. So grabbing the wire, bending the wire. And then with our round nose pliers, we're going up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side. And before we do our wraps, we're going to attach this to our connector. So we're going to take the tail end of that and stick it through the loop. And then we're going to wire wrap in that space. Right. And then we are going to trim off the excess, tuck, right? So there is that super cute. And then we're going to take an eye pin, open up the eye, attach that to the top loop of our connector. 
twist and we're going to thread on our fire polish and do a wrapped loop and add our ear wire. So these are super quick and easy, super cute though. These will be good for St. Patrick's Day if you don't like to wear green, you know, but you still want to like, you know, <laughs> you still want to show your Celtic, your Celtic support <laughs> of all things Irish. <laughs> I thought these were cute. Some people don't like green. Not, not everybody can wear green. You know what I mean? It's like yellow. Not everybody can wear yellow. So you still want to celebrate but not with you know crayola green this is a nice little alternative <laughs> all right trimming off and then adding our ear wire and these are done easy peasy look how pretty those are so so pretty all right, I've got one more pair and then we will be done and we'll do a quick run through of everything. And then I will leave to reset before my art beads live at 4 p.m. Eastern time. All right, so these, I love these. The beads in these are so stinking cool. So <clears throat> these are leather. We did some leather earrings last week. We're doing more leather this week. but This time we're using some Mayuki Magatama beads. So you can see these are the Magatamas. They're made by my Mayuki. They're just such a cool shape, right? They make such an interesting earring. I love that. So quick and easy. We've, we're going to take our leather and we are going to, let's start in the middle. We'll start in the middle with our metal bead. And then we're going to do our Magatamas on either side. Say that three times fast. My Yuki Magatama. <laughs> I don't think I can. Maybe when I'm well. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, hold on. It's funny because I have to figure out which direction they go. There we go. <laughs> So you're going to put four on either side of your metal bead. Okay. And this is the last one. All right. So there are all the beads and then you're going to take your leather you're going to bring your two ends together, just like so. All right, and you're going to bring in your cord end. And the cord end is a little big for these cords, but you're going to, you're going to pinch it down to make it work. Okay, so you're going to thread your cord ends all the way up to the edge there. And then you're going to squeeze, oops. You're going to kind of squeeze these together. They're hard to hold on to, I'm not going to lie. A little, a little tricky to hold on to, but bring your two edges without popping them like that. Closer together just by squeezing them with some pliers. Then you're going to take one side and, and mash it down, right? And then you're going to take the other side, squish it over, and also mash it down. So you're just folding it. Oh, I cut it. Oh, Bummer. I tr I squished too hard and I cut my leather. Be careful. Be careful. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. And then, <laughs> since I broke this one, you're going to take your, your eye pin, right? You're going to attach your eye pin. You're going to thread on your check glass, do a wrapped loop, and add your ear wire. I'm sorry, guys. I, I did not know my own strength there. But let that be a lesson. Don't don't squeeze too tight, okay? Don't squeeze too tight. You want to give it the tug test and make sure that it's nice and secure. But don't squeeze it so much that the leather gets cut by the metal. Um, sorry. <laughs> I still think they're fabulous, though. I wish I could have finished the whole earring for you. <laughs> All right. Setting these over to the side because that is it for our show today. I hope that you have enjoyed 
all of the projects. They're so pretty. I love those Hulk hands. I know I can't help it. It happens. You guys have seen it happen more than once. I, that's why I say I'm really hard on beads. I'm really hard on tools. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, guys, I'm going to grab a bust. I'm going to turn you guys around. We're going to do the run through. Now, some of the items in today's show have already sold out. If you don't want that to happen to you, you want to be sure that you're closing out your cart before you lose out on your, your kits. Okay, so we just put together our Mayuki Magatama. <laughs> Look how pretty. They're just simple and easy to wear. And these are cool because they're in this like peach color, which is the Pantone color of the year is that fuzzy peach. So fuzzy peach and rose gold are everywhere this season or this year in general, because rose gold is very close to that fuzzy peach. So this is definitely going to fit into that category of that Pantone palette. Really pretty, easy to wear, lightweight. Love those. And then we have our little our little Celtic knots here with our check glass, our melon, and our fire polish. Again, easy to wear. Just throw them on with anything you got on, you know? All right. Then we had our soft baby blue bracelet with the beautiful uh, sterling silver little components in the front, the little connectors with just that really beautiful. It's like a soft cornflower blue almost. So, so pretty. Love that. And then we had our bracelet with our lamp work, our little cha-cha. We've got the melons in it. This is such a cool bracelet. Love that one. And then last but not least, we had our two necklaces. So we have our lotus coin necklace. And those beautiful peacocky colors. So, so pretty. And we have <laughs> the first necklace that we did. Hold on. Make all my little pieces hang the correct direction here. Got everything flipped around the wrong way. Hold on. <laughs> All right. This one, which I think was my favorite in today's show. It was absolutely beautiful. So, so pretty with those check glass and the Preciosa bicones. It's just such a nice soft color palette. You could take the dangles off of this if you don't like the dangles, but. All right, everybody. That is it for my Feel Good Friday show. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon and letting me be a part of your BD journey and your Friday afternoon. Now, if you want to see more of me, please set your reminders for 4 p.m. Eastern time for our uh our art beads live over on the art beads website again we are celebrating international women's day today and we are spotlighting um women owned brands over on the art beads website so you definitely want to go and check that out and come hang out for my live and <clears throat> excuse me Thank you to everybody who has made purchases in my Etsy shop and all of you who have subscribed to my Patreon. I appreciate you so, so much. Looking forward to growing that side of our community. Cannot wait for that. Guys, please, uh, if I don't see you later today, please set your reminders for 1 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday uh, when, we be back to, when we will be back together for our weekly project on Tuesday. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. So if I don't see you later, have an amazing weekend and uh, try to stay well. I don't want to share this with you. All right. I love you guys. Have a great afternoon. Bye guys. <laughs>